Yes, yours. I'm going to come through that screen, grip you around the neck, and tell you to hit that subscribe button. Hey guys, hope everybody is well. It's a beautiful Thursday morning here in the UK, and uh, I've got a long, long day of training ahead of me. So every morning now, <clears throat> I get up, do a bit of a bit of a jog, come back, bit of a stretch off, and then we do about an, about going up to two hours of strength and conditioning, always specific to each day. Have a bit of dinner, do a cryo, and then have a nap and then head to boxing and then it's back physio, stretching, hot cold treatment. So it's a pretty pretty full on schedule every day at the minute. So today we're gonna to do them back. We're gonna do some stiff leg deadlifts, some upper back, some rhomboids, a little bit of biceps and uh, do a bit of obliques and we'll do some abs as well. So plenty going on. So welcome to a day in the life. Right after the stiff leg deadlift, so that's kind of like the bottom half of the session. We alternate weeks to do normal deadlifts and stiff leg deadlifts. Again, completely different muscles. So one's doing more glutes, one's doing more sort of hamstrings and, and, and quads and sort of lower back. Then we do move on to upper back. We're trying to do two exercises on lats, two exercises on rhomboids. So we're just going to do the hammer strength row. This is one of the exercises on the rhomboids. Uh, again, just work up to a super heavy weight and then move on uh, nice and easy. Probably just five, maybe six sets on this. Uh, we'll max it out and then do some wax then. Right, so uh, we've done one lat, one rhomboid. I'm gonna do another rhomboids now. So basically, we're punching power. I always think that the stronger your rhomboids are, the more you're able to rotate and get that power in. So big, big, strong back equals big punching power. So we're gonna really concentrate the lats, yes, but more on the rhomboids if possible. If we have to choose between the two, I'd rather do two sets on the rhomboids than the lats. Running a bit slack on time, so uh, we'll do three sets on this. A little bit of hammers for the biceps, just get some blood through, and then we'll do some oblique training. Probably, uh, what is it today? Probably get a glove on and just hammer each other in the sides, make sure the obliques are all working, firing well. difference where it goes red. I'm giving you some variation. Yeah, so you're hitting me in the rib. Hey, you're not gonna hit there exactly the same time every time. Yeah, I'll hit you in the rib, fine. Yeah, that's great. You're welcome. I'm really building up my core. So in here, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah in my pec. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> right, that'll do us. Uh, joking apart, I know it doesn't seem, people seem that that's like not a good thing to do for for abs and obliques, but that absolutely destroys your obliques, doesn't it? Not just it's damage, also, it's also tempting. Good when we're trying to breathe, when we're boxing and stuff, it teaches you, obviously we're taking impacts anyway. Yeah. I'm trying to get your body as best as I can. He's got good. 
good advantage with it. But he, um, it teaches you how to breathe when you're pushing out, forcing that air out, just trying to get that pressure away from your stomach. That'll do us for the session. Now we're going to jump in the next room, do my cryotherapy for three minutes at minus 120, 130 degrees centigrade, and then upstairs for food, and then uh, we'll have a little bit, of, a little bit of an afternoon nap before we head for boxing. So not together. Right, the cryo machine. So that's that's a full tank of liquid nitrogen there. Take the lid off, and then have to put the the pipe in. It sucks the liquid nitrogen into the machine, and then I'm just going to pre-cool it a little bit. This what this does. The pre-cool gets all the pipes nice and cold. Gets the, the chamber a little bit cooler as well. So you can see the temperature, the cabin temperature there coming down seven six five once it gets down to about a minus 100 degree centigrade you can jump in and then we do the actual protocol which is uh, three minutes at about 120 minus 120 130 degree centigrade oh my god so this for me is just an amazing an amazing bit of recovery uh, in between the strength and conditioning and my boxing training so what it does is really shock the system puts me in a state of basically repair you know it releases all the all the endorphins and freezes all the muscles so i can basically it puts me ready for my, for my afternoon nap as well because i'll have my food and then uh, i'll have a quick shower jump in bed and that warming up process so as you know when, you, when you're in winter and you come in from like a cold day that warming up process makes you super tired um, and then i wake up you know what i'm a bit groggy when i wake up but I'll spend a little little bit of time stretching, so I'll probably spend about a half an hour, 45 minutes stretching, and then by the time I make it to boxing, I'm fully awake, alert, uh, recovered from the strength and conditioning session. Jesus Christ, it's cold. Oh. oh, it is that cold, it's painful. Like, I'm not even joking. I was saying, doing this in, in my basement, literally, there's my gym, here's my cryo. That room there, if you just look through there, is, uh, is going to be my boxing ring, so I'm just waiting for that to be delivered. Uh, so basically, I'll have, I'll have the whole fight camp at home. So I'll do my strength conditioning, do me do my recovery, have my nap, and then jump in the ring. So I'll never have to leave my house. And then obviously, I've got the, the spa being built in the garden, so I can do my recovery in the evenings, all my hot cold treatments. I'm hoping to have everything in place uh, in the next month or so. Ooh, that's lovely. Right. 10 past 12, it's time for luncheon. So this is luncheon for me at the minute. So I've got two large pieces of chicken, about 300 gram of rice with uh, mixed in, cooked in chicken stock, actually, not water, and then about 200 gram of vegetables as well. Half a glass of orange juice, just to get some fruit, fruit sugars in there, helps with the digestion as well. Always like to, like to have my CBD products as well during lunchtime because that'll help me sort of relax and, and go to sleep a bit better so i have one gummy a couple of cbd capsules then a few drops of the cbd oil after i have the omega freeze multivitamins vitamin k and um digestive enzymes and zmas and a good mouthful of uh, fish oils as well so just just throughout the day just topping up on some nutrients yeah i'm, I'm done done talking to you now because I'm really hungry. So. Yeah. So, finished dinner off. Had my CBD products. <clears throat> Just having the drips there. CBD drops. Full spectrum, two fat, two thousand milligram per 10 mils that's pretty that's like the best one you can get really i find that just just chills you out takes away the information for me just help, helps me recover a little bit better so i'll take that and then uh, i'll go climb in bed now and warm up from my uh, cryotherapy session have a good hour and a half two hour nap and then up stretching and then off for boxing so i'll see you uh, when i've woke up two thousand years later Ah, splendid. Thank you, darling. So that was uh, a nice hour and a half nap. As I wake up, just to get some fast, 
fast carbs are really something that isn't too hard to digest either. I just have some, uh, what do you call this, muesli? Granola. Chocolate granola. Chocolate, gran <laughs> chocolate, chocolate granola is, that, is what I have. With a little bit of, um, little bit of lacto-free milk. And we have lacto-free because years ago, I mean years ago, training for training for world's strongest man, I had all the tests done, uh, blood tests, and it came back I was lactose intolerant, and I didn't really think it'd be that important. But then a doctor explained to me what that's doing to the body is it ends up inflaming the stomach because obviously, like, you know, it's not digesting, so it upsets your stomach. Sort of things get being digested, sort of things coming out as well. And if it's, if it's inf inflammating your stomach, what's it doing to the rest of your body? You know, like your elbows, your, your wrists, your knees, your back, everything else. So I've been lacto free since 2000 and 2016. I like this because it, the sell by date lasts for like a month as well, so it's ideal. So uh, <clears throat> stretching for boxing means you've got to be quite clever about it. So I give myself sort of 45 minutes to stretch before I box. And you've got to be stretching the muscles that are going to be working, so it's pointless. It's, it's kind of pointless stretching your quads and stuff like that because they are not used virtually at all. But stuff like your calves, your rotation, all your shoulder muscles, your rotator cuffs. So stuff like that sort of take priority. Of course, I'll do the hamstrings and glutes because they're sort of quite prominent at twisting and turning as well. Basically, anything that I feel is tight that's going to that I feel is going to hinder me for the session, like calves, because calves is a big one. You've got tight calves, then uh, makes a big mess of uh, moving about, basically. So I'll, I'll make sure I stretch my calves quite heavily. I do 30 seconds each side twice, and then uh, move on to another muscle group. But, um, well, people, people underestimate how good of a prep stretching is for strength and conditioning and for the strength sessions and for the cardio sessions. It does lem lengthen the muscle head. It does give you a bit more sort of usage of the muscle and, uh, and it keeps you mobile, which is the, one of the most important things in, in boxing is being mobile and agile, able to duck and dive and use, use the full contraction of the muscle to sort of step in, step out, step to the left, step to the right. So it's uh, something I've got to get used to doing again. Right, so we just got to boxing. Um, perking up a bit now, waking up from my nap, had my coffee. Uh, put my tense machine on, me, uh, me little injuries in my shoulders and arms on the way here. And then Lyndon's here eagerly with his, uh, with his pipe cleaning things. Ready to, <laughs> ready to slap, slap away at each other for a little bit. So I think, well, what's the plan, Lyndon? Next target, we're going to do some technique. Uh, keen on, you know, just homing in on technique, keeping everything good. Yeah. We're going to do a bit of interval training with the bags, okay. and we're going to do a bit of some movement drills with pad on the body bag. So, a few rounds, probably 10 rounds. 10 free minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but mixed bag, a bit, bit of everything. Okay. Okay, so how do you think Eddie's getting on with the boxing since the first time you've kind of boxed with him to now? Yeah, he's doing really well. Um, he's got a lot of natural talent, which is always a head start. Um, we've got him rotating into his shots, we've got him using his feet. He's very, very explosive, as you would expect. He's, he's, um, he's very powerful, very explosive. He tends to overwork with everything that he does. So we're slowing him down throughout the round. He's picking his shots really nicely now. His punch select selection is really good. Uh, so yeah, he's coming on really, really well. We've got a rule in camp, and that is the rest of the team will watch any footage of four that we can get hold of. So we are watching everything, but we don't let Eddie see anything at all. So he's not he's not sort of looking at anything to do with all. We are the team, the rest of the team. So 
I just think it's going to be sticking to the game plan. We've got a plan uh, how we're going to fight him. Obviously, he's got certain advantages with his physical stature. He's taller. We know how to negate that. We know how to um, get over that. That's, that's, that's not an issue. So this is going to be six to eight rounds and it's a matter of who can stick to the game plan throughout the rounds and that's that is our plan stick to the game plan we know how to beat him right uh we're gonna have to wrap up today we are only done about 40 minutes it's that old sort of listen to your old body sort of thing i'm getting some really bad sort of jolting in my left bicep the jabs aren't too bad but any hooks any lot especially long range hooks the whole bicep from top to bottom is just anchoring up I'm going to rest up today now, uh, head back home and uh, get some physio and uh, get lots of food and lots of drink. I'm li feeling a little bit under the weather, which obviously doesn't help. So uh, we'll get back home and finish up, get the physio in and that. So I'm back from boxing now and uh, pretty much every single day I'll have at least an hour's uh, physio with uh, Rich Hard here. Hello. How are you Rich Hard? Good, thank you. Very good. And uh, this is just to keep on top of all the injuries. So for instance, obviously I keep jarring my bicep of late, uh, the last couple of weeks. So we'll make sure we get that worked on, break it down, uh, so it can uh, have the best possible chance of recovering. And actually use a CBD massage balm. And that just helps, again, it's just getting that extra, extra little bit of CBD into the body because it absorbs through the skin. If it adds 0.1%, it's worth doing in my eyes. Okay, so Ed's just literally got in from his boxing session. So the aim of, for every session that we do is just to remove out the lactic acid buildup. Um, obviously, he's lost a lot of fat mass, so it's made my life a lot easier. It's called relaxed muscle, mate. Oh, is that what it is? Sorry, mate. So he's lost a lot of relaxed muscle, um, so it makes life a lot easier. So I can actually feel more muscle now um, and it's evident obviously looking at him that you can see the muscle it just means basically he'll feel it a lot more than he did before so you'll probably hear him squealing a little bit it's evident with the change in his training of what muscle groups are working more in certain in certain aspects of his trip so boxing obviously very heavy on the calves so we give the calves a good hammering because he's always on his toes. Um, and biceps are the one where, as in strong man, really we had no issues with biceps. So we're, we've noticed a significant difference in glute tension. So Ed's been focusing on a lot of core work as well. So he's been doing different forms of training for glutes. Um, so you can, it's, it, you, can definitely, you can definitely feel the tension in there. Yeah, it's quite a significant amount of difference in, in muscle definition and, and strength, really. So we, we're kind of attacking them areas more than others. Right, we're just done with physio. And uh, straight after physio, I always like to jump in the swimming pool that I just class as, as a hot tub. It goes up to 40 degrees centigrade, which is absolutely scorching. It's like getting in a, a real hot bath. Um, so this... This is perfect at the end of the day. Once I've, you know, I've had a hard day, I've been eating loads, doing all the stretching, recovery in the physio, jump in here, just get everything nice and warm, get, get all the blood circulating. And it's also my time to unwind, you know? Like play some nice music, be nice and relaxed. And then in here, it's a good place to do the stretching as well. So, you know, working all those super tight muscles, something that's probably niggling from the boxing session. So I'll definitely be stretching my bicep. And then down the bottom end there, so this is, um, it's what they call like an infinity pool. So you turn the jets on and you swim against the current. So it's like a, like a river, uh, like a continuous swim pool. Uh, but basically those jets are so, so powerful. I usually use it as a sort of, I put it on my glutes and hamstrings and quads and everything else. And it acts as a real, real amazing sort of, like, like it's like a, a water massage basically, but it gets so, so deep, probably deeper than what Rich can get with his you know fingers and thumbs and elbows. So I do this for like a couple of cycles, get about 20 minutes in against the jets, uh, stretch off, chill out, and then it's in. And then wife's gonna cook me a nice big tea, so. Right, out of the swim pool, quick shower. My beautiful wifey has uh, done me quite a large portion of 
air fried chicken and some baked potatoes, asparagus, a bit of coleslaw and stuff, loads of peppers uh, and loads of cooked, cooked in lots of uh, butter as well. So for added calories and good fats. And uh, probably half a bottle of mayo as well to uh, wash it all down with. So I'll smash through this and then one or two snacks throughout the day, throughout the night. But um, oh, turn that off. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a full day for me. Uh, very de dedicated, very long-winded, um, but enjoying it. Really, really am enjoying it. It's a, it's a journey, for sure. So, guys, thank you for watching the video. If you've got any other ideas, hit me up in the comments. But for now, keep being amazing, keep being awesome. Big love the beast. Take care. Thank you.